Hey everyone, it's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys the weekly Twin Flame reading. I know I'm a little late. I usually post it on Sunday evenings, but I went ahead and just decided, you know what, I'm going to do it today. So it is going to be for Monday, December 12th, which is today, all the way until Sunday, December 16th. Now the thing is, I never used to do videos that were time, you know, frames and this and that. So really, whenever you come across this video, it can resonate for you. And as usual, just take what resonates in any general reading that you see on YouTube and get rid of what doesn't. I just want to say to all of my subscribers and supporters and everybody that took the time to reach out to me with your kind, supportive words, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, you know, a lot of you I was able to personally respond. There might be a few still lingering emails that I have yet to get back to, but I will get to them. I just want you guys to know how much I appreciate it so much. It was so heartfelt, and it always serves as a reminder of why did I even address it? You know what I mean? Why did I even let the naysayers or the negativity that was coming to me uh, during that last reading, why did I let it affect me? Why did I even make it a big thing? So anyways, moving forward once again, I'm really, really going to try not to let that happen again. I know that uh, people become triggered for certain types of reasons. I don't know everything there is to know about Twin Flames. I'm no expert. I am just a normal person that happens to do Twin Flame readings on this journey with some of you. So if you guys are watching my videos, just take what resonates and get rid of what doesn't. We're not going to be in alignment 100% with everything that you know we're, we're thinking or believing or that I'm channeling for the week. So you guys just have to watch these videos as well as other videos that are very general, um, you know, with discretion. So moving forward, I just want to just get back into the routine and whatever kind of crap comes my way, I'm just going to delete it. I'm not even going to respond. I'm just going to just go right over it. <laughs> so anyways... Um, yeah, let's get into this reading, you guys. So I'm going to be using today... Tony Carmine Salerno decks. I happen to have eight of his decks now. I love his decks and that's what we're going to be using. So I just thought it would be fun. So I will let you guys know as I am shuffling what decks they are. Okay. This particular deck was just gifted to me by a lovely client. You know who you are. Thank you so much. This is called the Magdalene Oracle Cards. So I'm super excited to use this as the first time I've ever used them in a reading. So we're just going to shuffle these guys. We're going to be taking a look at Divine Masculine and Divine Feminine Energies, as well as the connection. So I'm just going to put this over here. This one is called the Universal Love Oracle. This one right here is probably one of my favorites from Tony Carmine Salerno. It's called Gaia Oracle. It's pretty, it's pretty awesome. So I'll put that there. This right here is called the Lover's Oracle. There's actually two um, versions of this. This was the original, but since um, it's obviously been in production, they have created new ones. So it's like a double-sided, like there's a picture on the front and words on the back. This particular deck, because it was one of the originals, just has the picture and the words together on the back. So I've been th thinking about upgrading um, the deck, but you know, this one's lovely as well. So we'll put that there. This is the only tarot that I know of that he has produced. It is called the Art of Love Tarot. It's really amazing. And there's different uh, different suits, like you know, trees are trees are the pentacles, angels are the swords, cups are the wow. I can't think for some reason, you guys. Um, but I know that the uh, stars are wands. Anyways, I'm sure that we'll get maybe a cup card, so I'll be able to remember what that is. Okay, so I'm going to put that over here. This one is called the Wisdom of the Golden Path. And this one is the Angels, Gods, and Goddesses deck. Hearts, that's what it is. The cup suit is hearts. All right, let's get into it, you guys. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just, because I really like to put the tarot in the front like this. So we're going to go ahead and just get some energies here. I'm just going to select from these cards, uh, the decks over here for random messages. So let's go ahead and get into the masculine energy. Where's the masculine this week? What is the overall energy of the masculine? Overall energy of the masculine, beautiful. We have the eight of stars, which is the eight of wands, you guys. So the eight of wands, the key word on this card says surge. And that's exactly what the eight of uh, stars, eight of wands is, is it's moving energy. It's energy that's moving forward. It's very fast paced. It's very spontaneous. It's very energetic. The eight of... Uh, Eight of Wands can also be an indication of communication, okay? So it could be that the masculine is thinking about communicating, perhaps, um, or moving forward towards his divine feminine, you know? So we're going to go ahead and get some extra, or extra messages here and just see what that may have to do with. So what does this energy, this Eight of Stars Surge energy, have to do with? I'm going to go ahead and go into this oracle, and I'm just going to randomly choose a card in this deck. We have Magdalene. Very interesting. The Magdalene energy in this deck is talking about being authentic, okay? Mary Magdalene, standing out from the crowd, being unafraid to basically stand in, you know, the divine masculine's truth. So this is about being authentic, authentically moving forward and not being afraid. So moving forward with bravery is what I'm getting here. So I want to go ahead and get an additional message with this. Let's go ahead and go into the um, Guy Oracle. What else does this have to do with? Wow, look at this, you guys, sacred journey. This is talking about a life cycle, family, and transformation. So transforming, being authentic, moving forward. So I'm getting here... Um, more of this energy about the masculine moving forward for himself, meaning that he is just kind of, you know, realizing what he truly wants and truly desires on this sacred journey, how he wants. And I'm saying he, the masculine can be a she as well, but these are just energies and that's how I uh, channel. So yeah, this is an energy here where the masculine is really wanting to move forward here and transform some sort of aspect about himself. There's some sort of a cycle that the masculine may have been caught up in. It may have to do something with family or just his life cycle and really wanting to be authentic, being more true to himself, wanting to move out of this um, energy of not being authentic. So I'm just seeing that this is a big theme for the masculine this week, maybe really reviewing his life and trying to figure out what it is that he truly desires and what he wants moving forward and have a more safe sacred experience on this journey and in this lifetime. So this is huge for the masculine this week, okay? So why don't we go ahead and see where the feminine is at? What is the feminine's major energy for this week? We have her in the Eight of Angels, Eight of Swords energy. The key word is confusion. So maybe the feminine is feeling a little confused this week, a little restricted. Uh, the Eight of Swords is that energy of um, kind of like our own thoughts are kind of holding us hostage and keeping us bound. It's not really a situation. Yes, it has to do with the situation, but it's the way that we're processing the information. It's the way that we're rolling around over and over again, the, the energy or the messages in our brains. So let's go ahead and take um, a, another look here and just see. So I'm going to use some different cards for the feminine. Let's see what this has to do with. Wow, look at that, you guys. Transmutation. This is about transmuting this energy. So whatever it is that you're stuck on, whatever it is that's holding you back, and this is a way of thinking. That's what I'm getting here. It's a way of thinking. We feel bound. This, this is completely opposite energy. This is bound. This is freedom here. Transmutation. Rising above this energy. Getting out of that confining energy. Whatever it is, whatever thought that, that you guys are having, whatever thought process that's keeping you bound, keeping you stuck, a way of thinking, a belief system, whatever it is, this is transmuting this energy this week. This is coming through this energy. This is healing this energy. This is about breaking free from something. I love it. So we're going to go ahead and get into another message here just to see what this may have to do with. Oh my, look at that self-worth. I love it. So this is about the feminine here. She's taking care of herself this week. Whatever she, whatever has been holding her back, whatever she feels like she just has not been able to move forward. This is, this is, this is transmuting this week. 
That's just what I'm getting here. It's transmuting this week. She's choosing her this week. She's choosing herself. She's choosing to put more energy into her self-worth, self-soothing, things that make her feel good. She is releasing blockages. She is releasing or transmuting any lower vibrational energies or thoughts this week. So what I'm really actually seeing for the masculine and the feminine is very, very similar here. Very similar but it looks like they're doing something on their own in order to, you know, kind of level up or go to the next level of their, of their um, evolution. So I see great things for the feminine and the masculine this week on their own for sure. So let's go ahead and take a look at the journey. Let's go ahead and take a look at their connection. What does the connection look like this week? What are the energies surrounding the connection? Oh my, do you see this? The star, the star, beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and get three tarots for this one though. We have the three of trees. This is about two people working together towards the same goal. And look at what that goal is. It's the star. It's the spiritual connection. It's the hope and dedication towards this connection. So whether both parties realize it or not, they're both energetically, they're soulfully, whether they are awakened to it or not, doing this towards the connection. And we have the, oh my gosh, the six of angels transition, the sixes. And I got a lot of sixes actually when I did my twin flame reading um, today on Instagram. So I don't know, you know, maybe there's something there for you guys. But the sixes to me, it's about moving forward. It's about uh, harmony, choosing harmony instead of struggle and strife. So the six of swords is literally about moving past lower vibrational energies, moving past anything that is holding us back. So I do see that the feminine and the masculine are simultaneously working towards this connection, whether they both know it or not. So maybe the feminine is aware of it, maybe the masculine isn't aware of it, but the soul, the soul energy, what I'm getting of the connection is that both people and I keep seeing the word purge. I don't know why. Both people are purging things that no longer serve them on this, on just within them, their own lives and on this journey. So they're both dedicated to the same goal, but it's about moving forward. It's about transitioning, being unafraid to move forward and carry on, even if it's without our twin flame right now, okay, in the physical. So we're both dedicated towards the same spiritual goal here, the same spiritual journey. That's what I'm getting. Wow. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a message here from this deck. Oh my. <laughs> Whenever I get the answer is yes, this just means that this is a double confirmation from spirit that this is exactly what's happening on your twin flame journey. We have two souls that are dedicated to the same goal, okay? And again, whether one of them realizes it or not, it doesn't matter. Their souls are set towards the same goal. <laughs> That's amazing, okay? So I just want to get um, another card here from this deck here. The Magdalene Oracle, oh, heart and soul. Again, this is about following our heart. This is about following our soul, that soul call, I'm telling you. So even if somebody is unawakened at this particular time, this is this energy here that as long as we're carrying on, as long as we're putting that energy into our own evolution and growth, our heart and soul, so we cannot ignore the calling of our heart, the calling of our soul, and it has to do with the spiritual connection. At some point, we are going to say yes to this because it is, it is destined. Wow. How amazing for the connection this week, you guys. So Spirit is saying yes. It's like spirit is showing up. I always see the stars, that energy of spiritual guidance and protection, um, and especially with twin flames here. So I feel like the twin flames are being guided to transition out of any lower vibrational energies and really get into their heart and their soul and really get out of that ego, fear, worry-based thinking and, and detach from things that just are no longer serving them, okay? But it's definitely about moving forward. It's not about staying stuck. So if your heart and soul is telling you to just sit there and wallow in this, you know, in, in the sadness and, and wait for your twin flame. I'm getting that that's not the message. I'm getting that we must move forward so that way our energy is moving. It's flowing. Our twin flame will catch up, but it's not about waiting and stagnating for it and, and waiting on account of our twin flame to figure it out. We, we are dedicated towards the same goal, but we're going about it in a different way. 
that's what I'm getting here, okay? So why don't we go ahead and take a look and see how the, the masculine is feeling his feminine this week, okay? How is the masculine relating to his feminine? Let's see what comes through. It's the major energies that are coming through. Interesting, he's withdrawn from his feminine, the five of swords energy. So if some of you are resonating with these messages so far, you might be dealing with the twin flame who has or from a masculine who has withdrawn from you. They've withdrawn their energy. For some of you, it may have been very abrupt and painful. They've cut you off. They've ghosted you. They've stopped talking to you. Some of you may know why. Some of you may not know why. Some of you may have gotten an explanation. Some of you may not have gotten shit, okay? But whatever it is, it's definitely that feeling of struggle. Now, the angels, this is the sort energy. This is about mental energy. So it's our thoughts. So the masculine is maybe feeling a little struggled with his own thoughts this week. And so this is one of the reasons why he might be withdrawn from you. We already do see that in his overall energy that he is wanting to change something. He is wanting to basically change something about his path, about the way he's been going about his life. He's wanting to take things into a new direction. But sometimes when people are going through major changes, they will withdraw from us because they need that time for themselves to figure things out on their own, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get some energies here for the masculine now, how he's viewing his feminine. Wow, listening. Very interesting. So even though he's withdrawn, it's like his energy and his heart is, it's like he, the see the star and the stars already come up in this reading. So it's like he's still being touched by the divine. So even though, yes, the feminine here, even though he is withdrawn from the feminine, it's like spirit is still touching. And that's why we have this energy here, the heart and soul of the masculine. Okay. There's definitely this energy here that the Angels are actually helping to transition this energy here. They're helping the masculine to work towards this goal, giving the masculine some sort of hope for a new direction on this very sacred journey that the masculine, whether he realizes it or not, that he's on. Okay? Wow. So this is about being authentic. Remember, the masculine being more authentic to himself. So I just keep getting here, this energy. Sorry, my camera's just uh, it keeps going in and out. Um, but this is this energy here where it's like the masculine is is really listening. The masculine is being touched by the divine this week. So even though it's like, this is what how the masculine is seeing or feeling his feminine this week, he is getting some higher energy from the feminine. He is, when he maybe is quiet, maybe when he's sleeping, he is being touched by the divine. Meaning he's being touched not only by the divine itself, but the divine feminine, which is all one anyways. So there's this energy here that through this time of struggle, this energy that's that he's being affected by the uh, feminine's energy this week. That's what I'm getting here. He's being affected by the feminine's energy this week. So let's go ahead and get another message um, for how the masculine is feeling towards the feminine. I'm going to actually get one of these cards here. Oh my gosh, look at that. Unconditional love. So your unconditional love, your feelings towards your masculine in higher vibration are affecting your masculine this week. That's what I'm getting here, Diane Feminines. So whatever struggles your masculine is going through, whatever he has withdrawn from you for whatever reason, your unconditional love, that is the energy that's going to touch your masculine. Not the pain, not the blame, not the triggers, not the sadness. None of that energy is actually, that's actually going to probably continuously keep your masculine from you, withdrawn from you. But there's this energy here of unconditional love and really listening and, and feeling things with your heart, being in that heart and soul of this connection. Now, I'm not suggesting for some of you out there watching this video, because that kind of message does trigger some of you that have been really hurt, really hurt by your twin flame. And I get it. And this is not about, this is not about this energy that's saying, oh, it doesn't matter. It's just a twin flame. It's no big deal. You got to forgive him because it's your twin flame. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm getting here though, is that your, this unconditional love, this forgiveness, this energy is for you, divine feminines. And in turn, what it does is it actually helps the masculine as well. Being in that state of blame or hate, or just, you know, that sadness, you know, we can only wallow in that for so long. It does serve a purpose. It helps us to transmute energy. And this has already come through you're reading here that you're transmuting energy this week so whatever low vibrational energies that you have been stuck in maybe for a while or hell for a very long time okay where is it hold on you guys here 
So it's like you can stay stuck in that energy if you want, but you're getting nowhere in that energy, okay? Now, it doesn't mean just because you transmute this energy that your masculine is going to show up on your doorstep tomorrow, okay? Sometimes people feel or get stuck on any spiritual journey or hell, not even a spiritual journey, just in life. If I do this, I'll be rewarded. And then when that reward doesn't come, that's because the expectation that we had doesn't show up. Then we're just bummed. We lose hope. We lose faith. That didn't work. Whatever the situation is. The thing is, unconditional love is just unconditional love. You just have it. You don't expect anything from it. You just have it. And what it does is it's this energy that also helps you to feel more peaceful in your life. So this is what the, this is what the divine is actually just trying to give the feminine and the masculine this week. So feminines, if you want your masculine to feel this energy with you, you have to be willing to also be in that energy as well. You have to be able to be in that energy of unconditional love, okay? And it's for yourself. And I feel like it does definitely positively influence your masculine. There's no guarantees on that, but you're doing it for you and this connection no matter what, because that's what you signed up for. You signed up to learn about love through this connection, to learn about yourself and healing through this connection. That's the point of it. I mean, there's other things too, but this is just an aspect of it. So if you're missing the mark on this so far, you know, you gotta, you gotta get with the program. You gotta, you gotta get in this energy of more of this unconditional love that regardless of what your masculine does or doesn't do or what he's saying or withdrawing from you and all this other stuff, you've got to transmute that energy and get into that unconditional love. Okay, you're connected to this individual for a reason. You need to heal this energy. You need to heal these triggers. And it's within your masculine that this these things have happened to you. So we've got to heal that, is what Spirit's saying. So how the fe how the masculine is feeling the feminine this week? He's feeling your energy. He is feeling your energy. So if it's low or high, he's feeling it actually either way. But I'm seeing if you really want to positively affect your masculine, get into this energy. Okay, that's what spirit is telling you even through these cards. Get in the energy of unconditional love. And I know I'm probably are going to hear it in the, in the comments. Fuck that motherfucker and all this other stuff. You know what? I'm just going to delete them. Just going to let you know. Because you're not, you're not understanding what twin flames are. And you're not understanding the work as a divine feminine that you need to do on this path and on this journey. So anyways, let's go ahead and get into how the feminine is feeling her masculine this week. Oh, beautiful. Look at that beautiful spiritual number 11, divine order. This is the judgment card. Equilibrium or equilibrium, balancing the energies, being balanced in thinking, being very fair and just in her decisions or her thinking when it comes to the masculine. So let's go ahead and get another energy here. Oh, co-creation. I love it. So, re so remember, early on in this reading here, this is the connection. This is the twin flame connection right now, is co-creation. Two souls dedicated to the same goal, okay? So co-creation now is coming through. So the feminine is realizing just how much her energy actually affects the connection, so how she's feeling her masculine is she's trying to balance out the energies. How can I co-create with my masculine? How can I, you know, yeah, how can I co-create with this, this energy here? How can I use it in a positive way rather than, rather than it working against me in this lifetime? How can I dance with the energies of this connection? That's what I'm getting here. And that's where you're really going to find your niche on this journey is when you learn how to co-create with this energy that you have been given, this opportunity of being a twin flame, how to co-create with this energy. Yep, that's right. So let's go ahead and get another card here. Oh, Ganesha, love it. This is about clearing away obstacles, protection, and guidance. Okay, so again, we have a lot of clearing for the ma or for the feminine this week, you guys. A lot of clearing for the feminine. She is transmuting energy. She's clearing away obstacles. She is clearing out that Eight of Swords energy. She's no longer willing to stay stuck anymore. She's getting into this more balanced energy, not only with herself, because she is choosing herself, but by choosing herself, she chooses the connection, and she chooses the connection in an unconditional love, healing, higher vibrational type of a way. 
And then she realizes that she can co-create with this energy of her masculine. She's not fighting her masculine energy anymore. She's not fighting her masculine and everything that depicts that for her. She is now co-creating. She's dancing with both energies. She is balancing the energies. She's also seeing the divine order and everything, that everything is happening is specifically the way that it needs to happen. Everything is laid out in front of her for a specific reason. And so she's following divine timing. She's following the divine order of things. She's not trying to fight against the divine. She's not trying to fight against this connection or her masculine anymore. She's learning to dance. And that's what I'm getting for the feminine this week. Wow. Okay, you guys, we're going to go ahead and end this reading because I wanted to keep it about 30 minutes. We're going to end this reading with some messages from the divine about your connection and basically how they are helping to assist you in your connection. We could already see it through the star card that the divine is showing up today in full force anyways with the answer is yes and the star card. But let's go ahead and pick a card from each deck because I like to do that at the end of the reading. So that we're going to take a tarot. Oh my, we have the sun. I love it. The sun is about vitality. It's about illumination. It's about energy. It's about the sun, the sun shining, you know. Now I can see clearly now that the rain is gone and the sunshine comes out and, you know, the rainbows are there for hope and dark times are just, you know, coming to a close. <laughs> so this is the thing. This is where the divine is trying to, to take both the feminine and the masculine this, this week really and forever is towards illumination, towards the sun, towards happier times. Okay. So let's go ahead and get an angel here. An angel god or goddess. We have a God showing up. God of indulgence. Oh my gosh, I love this card. It says, it's all right. Stop beating yourself up. A little indulgence in balance is healthy. So for some of you, you may have been beating yourself up. Some of you may have just been in the dark. It's time to get out of that energy. It's time to get into the light. It's time to live a little is what spirit is saying here. I love it. Oh, we have this card here. All is not what it seems. I wish I could just block this out because I never get the energy. Maybe once or twice in a reading I've gotten that energy, but that's not the energy that I get for this card. All is not what it seems. So again, this is the card of illusions. We can get very caught up with what we are seeing in the material world. We're either seeing our masculine, our feminine, they're living their lives, they seem to be happy, they seem like they've forgotten all about us, okay? They don't care, okay? All is not what it seems. Everything that's happening right now is happening for a reason. Try not to get caught up in the illusion is what spirit is saying, okay? Try not to get caught up in your own illusions as well as in the stories that you're telling yourself. The stories that you're telling yourself that are just doom and gloom, that I'll never be happy, that I'll never find peace, I'll never find happiness. Those are just your own thoughts and illusions. That will fatally attract to you more of what you don't want. And I just got that message. It's about the law of attraction. So if you guys are thinking in your thoughts, fatal thoughts, this kind of energy here, you're just going to keep attracting it back to yourself. Your, your path isn't going to be illuminated. We have the opportunity to choose the sunshine. We have the opportunity to take ourselves out of this Eight of Swords energy for some feminines out there that got that card. So this is definitely about raising the vibration, raising our thoughts, attracting things that we want, not more of what we don't want, right? So get out and live a little. This is the holiday season. Get out and live a little. Go to a party, whatever it takes to raise that vibration. Or maybe it's just about spending time with a good book and a good bath. You know, whatever that means to you guys. All right, so let's go ahead and get another card here. Oh, we have expectancy. Very interesting. This is about something that's being created in the womb, our ex expectancy. This is also about our expectation. So if we expect doom and gloom, fatal things, things that are just going to not, it's not going to happen. Things are just, we're, it's dead. It's over. Whatever the situation is, what we expect is what we're going to attract. So we need to make sure that we keep our, our vibrations high. Now, a lot of people will misunderstand law of attraction. You know, well, if I just concentrate on something, that's that's what I'm going to attract. Absolutely. But we always have to remember when we're dealing with our expectations when it comes to other people, free will is on the table. We can't, we can't discard that. We can't pretend that that's not a law of the universe. It is. We come into this planet with free will. So if you're expecting, if you have all of your hopes and your dreams pent up on a person, because the thing is at the end of the day, maybe the person that you feel is your twin flame, maybe it's not. Okay. 
So maybe some of these readings are for you and maybe some of you out there watching this, maybe this is what you want this person to be your twin flame. Maybe they're not, okay? And that could be this energy here where you're expecting that this person is going to, you know, wake up and they're going to choose you and this, you know, and you're putting all of your hopes and dreams into this energy and into the situation. And maybe what a, what the person that you are wanting is really not a good person, really a really low vibrational energy, somebody who's abusing you. Sometimes people will slap a twin flame label on a person because they want that connection so badly. But this person may not be good for you. And I'm talking about somebody who is just abusing you, somebody that is just, you know, I mean, it's, it's just a real bad situation, okay? And I'm not saying that a twin flame can't have be in those energies. I believe anyone can be a twin flame. But the thing is, is that sometimes what we want so badly to work out, our own expectations are like literally strangling the hell out of it. It has to be this or else. So we have to make sure that we're not attracting a person to ourselves, trying to attract somebody, trying to make something work that just isn't good for us. The best thing to do is to just let go and let the divine be our guide. Whatever is meant for us will be, okay? So we have to kind of question what we're attracting to ourselves is what I'm getting here from spirit, okay? And I'm not here to say that might be a negative trigger for some of you out there that somehow I, I just said here that the person that you think is your twin flame is not your twin flame. Not really what I said, but there's always that possibility that what we want to be so badly, maybe it just isn't. And maybe we're just on this journey to kind of figure out that the person that we thought was our twin flame, maybe they weren't. And that's okay, but you're still on this journey and it's still doing wonderful, positive things for you. Maybe it will lead you to your twin flame, or maybe this journey is just about your own evolution, perhaps. However you got here, wh whatever reason you're on it, you know, it is a blessing regardless. So anyways, our expectations are what we're going to attract, but there is this fatal attraction card here. And so we need to make sure that what we are attracting is really a, for our highest good. Okay, so sometimes that takes that sometimes we need to kind of step aside and take our own expectations off the table. If our if our expectations are codependent, I need, I want, I can't live without, that is codependent energy. Okay. So we gotta transmute that energy. We gotta transmute this energy. We gotta let go a little bit. We gotta let this this energy or just this connection breathe just a bit. So our expectations to what we want can somehow be you know, uh, attracted. We can attract what we want and it will come to us in a higher vibrational period. So I'm just getting that if our expectations are low vibration, it's like we might just be attracting the same scenario over and over again. So this is about letting things breathe, come into the light, letting these dark thoughts, these lower vibrational energies, let it come into the light, let it heal. Okay. And in the meantime, have some fun. So I know that I would, that one was long winded, but I just felt a lot of energy with the expect expectancy card. Did I already get a card here? Hold on. Yeah, okay. Ascension. Exactly. We gotta break, we gotta break free. We gotta ascend to the next level. Whatever this is, whatever this lower vibrational energy is, where we're stuck in illusions, we're stuck in fantasies, we're stuck in the stories that we're telling ourselves, or we're getting caught up in what we're seeing on social media when it comes to our twin flame, we gotta rise above this. We got to rise above this crap. We got to stop participating in this lower vibrational energy because what it's doing is it's dimming your happiness and it's dimming your light. And what spirit is telling you is that you're going to attract what you expect. So the stories that you're telling yourself, the thoughts that you're thinking, you're just going to keep replaying that same record over and over again. We got to break free from that pattern. We got to break free. We got to rise above and live a little, have a little fun. That's how it's going to help you to raise your vibration because I get a lot of those um, comments, which is, okay, that's great that you gave me that message, but how do I do it? Get out and live and have a little fun on your own. Your entire life is not about this connection, okay? It's a big part of your spiritual growth and journey and ascension in this lifetime, but it's not your entire life. So you've got to live a little. you got to get out and have a little fun on this journey too. All right, so let's get another message. The search, feeling lost, confused, and lonely. You know, this is very difficult because this journey can feel lonely. This journey can feel like until I until I come back into union with my twin flame, I am not complete. I feel incomplete. And this is an energy here that will keep you stuck in low vibration. We've got to we gotta ascend. And that's a part of this journey is to actually let go of your twin flame. It is a part of your journey to ascend, okay? And when I say let go, 
Um, I'm not talking about energetically to, um, or energetically letting go. It may be physical for some of you. You might need to physically step away from your twin flame or they need to step away from you in order to search for their own, the meaning of life, their own journey, who they, who you are as a person, things like that, your soul. But I'm just getting here that if we're stuck searching for this other person to deliver our happiness and to, to deliver all of the answers and everything that we need on this journey, this is actually going to make your journey a lot more difficult. Okay. Again, we're in this lower vibrational attracting more of what we don't want. We need to raise out of that energy. We need to transcend out of that energy. We need to transmute and go to the next level of our ascension process. Okay. So it's actually about letting go of this expectation and, and, and feeling lost without your twin flame. A lot of people feel that. I feel misery. I feel lost. I feel like I can't move. That kind of energy on your twin flame, you're supposed to be in the energy at one point or another on your twin flame journey, but you're not meant to stay there. You got to transmute. You got to ascend from that energy. That's what Spirit's saying. This is the last message. I got one, two, three, four, five, six. I got two more cards. What I need to draw from this one here Wisdom of the Golden Path. Yeah. We got to embrace change. You got, this is the only way things are going to change. That's just what I'm getting. I know you guys don't want to hear it, but this is the only way things are going to change. We can't stay in this energy here. You're searching for something that's actually within you. You're searching for your twin flame to bring you this answer, to bring you this wholeness, to bring you this energy here. And what I'm getting from spirit is that, you know what? You're going to still stay in this energy of feeling lost and confused. You're missing the mark here. The search is actually within. It's not outside of you. Okay. So the only way things are going to change is if we change, if we change our vibration, if we change our tune. Okay. So what deck did I, I have one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I guess I only have seven decks. I thought I had eight. I don't know what I was thinking. So anyways, we got seven cards here. Yeah. So I just wanted to end the reading with all this. You know, I know that that was really deep. I know that that went into a lot of different messages, but hey, that's what spirit needed to bring to some of you out there watching this video. Um, like I said, if you guys get triggered from any of the messages that came through here, no worries. Um, I really don't want to hear it. That's okay, but I'll just delete it anyways. If you want to leave uh, stupid comments, that's fine. But um, for those of you that really get it, for those of you that are really on this journey for self-discovery, and ascension on your own spiritual journey. Yes, of course, this has to do with your connection with your divine um, counterpart, but it's not the only thing that matters. And so those of you I'm speaking to, you get it. And those are the people that are going to resonate with this reading. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. And I will catch you guys next week for this weekly twin flame. All right, take care. Bye-bye.